All right, hi folks, welcome to another interview from the mind of a skeptical leftist. Uh, this is a weird one, uh, not quite the usual fare of getting to know people who create content or wrote a book or uh, something else. Um, in this one, I talk to people that I've already interviewed and quite and I like them quite a bit. Rosa and Ellis run the website and YouTube channel, Rosa and the Intolerant Left. In this interview slash chat, we're talking about the persecution they're facing from the state. Um, the details are a bit hazy in my mind, but essentially Ellis has been accused, and I think still hasn't been charged, of accessing underage... Uh, something that was flag about a flag that was raised on a website he went on or something like that. Uh, the state still hasn't provided any actual evidence, and despite taking Ellis into custody briefly, they had to release him because they didn't charge him. Rosa understandably reacted quite negatively to this, and the police tried to turn her against Ellis, uh, which didn't work. Rosa then was nearly charged with threatening to kill a police officer, even though she didn't threaten, uh, and she was eventually released as well without any charge. At the moment, their website is down, but they detail things on their Twitter as well, and some in this conversation. Uh, a few thoughts of my own came out when I was working on this interview and when I'm relating back to the previous interview with them. So first, some people are going to ask why the state targeted uh, Rosa and Ellis. And Rosa has her answer. And that's, it's very, uh, it's a very big answer. There's lots to it. Uh, but I have a slightly different one and I hope that, I hope that you will indulge me and that it doesn't feel like an attack on Rosa or Ellis because that's not what it's intended. Um, in my opinion, uh, because of the nature and hegemonic power of the state and its actors, it doesn't take action from someone high up in the government it, or even knowledge of someone with uh, power to target someone that is a threat to the state. Um, Ellis is a longtime activist who has shown himself quite resourceful at radicalizing people uh, that he talks to. This combined with the negative relationship that he has with local police and you get a situation where he is well known by police for multiple reasons and they don't like him. You can find us talking about some of that in the first interview that I did with Rose and Ellis, which I'll put in the link in the show notes. Um, I think that the police know that they don't have any chance of making these charges stick regarding the exploitation. Um, so they are targeting them in a way to make them react as violently as possible and as, as explosively as possible. And then hopefully they can arrest them for something uh, legitimate, something like that they view as legitimate, something like violence towards an officer or something else like that. And it almost worked because right, Rosa is rightfully very emotional about the situation due to past trauma and mental health issues. This is not intended as a slight against her, it's just she reacted very ex uh, reactively. Uh, she expressed herself very uh, explosively in multiple situations with the place. Uh, it's an upholding of state power and hierarchies by local cops who fully believe in the system and who have uh, a bad relationship with a couple of anarchists. Uh, I hope I'm expressing this well. I think Rosa and Ellis are victims of a small scale conspiracy by cops who know them and don't like them. It may also involve a landlord <laughs> for the community they live in who is also carrying out illegal actions to make people move but will likely never be charged. And Rosa and Ellis are a legit threat to his ability to control the property they're on because of the, his, uh, their ideas and their charisma. Okay, that's the first one. Second, I think it's important to acknowledge that cops lie all the fucking time. They cannot be trusted. Uh, this, is, this is months after the police confiscated their, uh, their computers and tech and they still haven't been charged. Uh, there is no victim who came forward. All they have is a supposed red flag that came up because, of a, web, because a website was accessed. And it makes me think of years ago when I was on a variety of Yahoo groups and, and lists and one day I got a very disturbing email containing <laughs> I closed it, looked up the method for reporting it to the RCMP, I sent it forward, uh, I deleted the email and I removed myself from the group that sent it out. Um, <laughs> and it took all of about 30 minutes. But if a flag was raised because of that group, then I could have been targeted. Uh, <clears throat> And this is granting that there's a flag to be there was a flag raised in Ellis's case at all, based on the documentation that was given to Rosa and Ellis. The warrant that was granted after the cops came and took their shit, uh, 
<laughs> so the timeline didn't match up with what the police were saying. Uh, and it seems like they created an excuse after the fact for invading their home and taking their stuff. And uh, so third, uh, I want to say people are really bad at defending themselves. Uh, Roseanne Ellis, uh, I like Roseanne Ellis. I care deeply about what happens to them. I think they're innocent. But I think someone who wanted to could pick holes in their various explanations. And I don't think you, I don't think it's fair to judge people based on the way they react to being accused of something like this because they're under a lot of stress. It's hard knowing that the state act, that state actors and all the power of the, that they hold behind them, uh, are targeting you. And no matter what the reason is, that's a lot of power to feel against you. And that's why they need support and solidarity and not judgment. And lastly, uh, even though lawyers, barristers, solicitors, or whatever they're called, often buy into the system uh, they work for a little bit too much, we still need them. The law speaks a language that lay people don't really understand. It's not a matter of right and wrong, ethical or unethical. It's a matter of rules, policies, customs, and procedures that must be adhered to in order to get the correct outcomes. I'm reminded of a TV show that I, I watched when there was a regular guy, he had to stand up and speak in front of a judge, but he couldn't stop swearing because that's just the way he speaks. And I mean, I can relate. Uh, but in the show, the judge admitted that the guy had to swear or curse, if that's the better way to understand it, uh, in order to give himself a proper defense. But in reality, you don't get to do that. Uh, the judge isn't going to say, yeah, it's okay that you're speaking in the way you're speaking because that's how you speak. They're going to say, this is why you need a fucking lawyer, right? Like, that's what they're going to say. Uh, you can't speak plainly in court. And everything is a matter of procedures that you have to follow very specifically. And you have to carry these things out in a certain way in order to get the outcome you want. I hate the court system, but lawyers are a necessary evil so long as the system remains cryptic to regular people. Maybe this isn't as long as I thought it would be. I hope that explains my point of view on this well enough. I hope Rose and Ellis don't feel hurt by anything I said. Uh, I hope that I didn't talk so fast that people don't understand me. Um, I care about them and I support them as much as I can from across the ocean. Uh, Twitter support will only go so far. I don't have much money and I have my own issues uh, with that. So hopefully my heartfelt wishes uh, are enough because at this time, that's all I have, as well as my platform. If you know more about law, UK law and have some insights into some kind of innocence project or some kind of uh, uh, like lawyers who work pro bono for people who've been accused of crimes, uh, then definitely like lend them a hand as much as you can. I believe that they are innocent and I know that cops lie. And I know that state actors are going to uphold the state through their actions and through their ideas and through their beliefs without direction from someone above because of the ingrained attitudes that make them target anyone who doesn't conform. And that means outspoken anarchists like Roseanne Ellis are easy targets to justify. I know that if it turns out that I'm wrong, then my reputation won't be worth much anymore. But I find it's worth it to stand up for people who have been accused by the state not victims. They have been accused by the state of something awful and without any evidence. <sighs> so that's a long intro, but I still need to do the pitch. Thank you to all my patrons. Patrons make it possible for me to do this show. And we just found out yesterday that we have to find a new place to live and we don't have enough for a deposit on anything and need to save around two grand. So if you want to help me pay the deposit on a new place, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. There's also other links where you can help financially in the show notes. So uh, check those out if you just want to do like a one-time payment or whatever. Uh, support levels on Patreon is a dollar a month or a dollar fifty for Canadians. If you can't support me financially, then please hit the like button and go and write a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser. I always need more ratings and reviews, uh, so everyone make sure to check out the links in the show notes. You should also subscribe on YouTube or in the podcast app of your choice uh, so that you can get new episodes as soon as they come out. Uh, feel free to contact me uh, by messaging on social media or by leaving a comment on YouTube. Uh, use the contact form on my website, skepticalleftist.com, or you can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. On to the interview. <laughs> All right, so we are now live. Uh, everybody knows the show. It's the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, and uh, I'm talking to Rosa and Ellis from uh, We Are the Intolerant Left. 
uh, <laughs> and uh, we're talking about your uh, the the prosecution that you're facing from the state. So yeah, uh, I mean, at present, charges haven't been brought, which kind of highlights the ridiculousness. Because if they really had the evidence they claimed, and in recent days, and kind of partially because of this delay with. Our lawyer told us what almost four weeks ago that one or actually both of us might be uh, would would definitely be arrested in the next two weeks. Now, okay, it's been four weeks. They haven't. If they really had this evidence, uh, which to be honest, like people need to realize, the only thing that somebody being investigated for this or their lawyer gets told at the time is that they get told by a cop that cop labs have found a thing. Like you're not presented okay. with proof that they actually found anything, and and because we believe that the um, the aim of this the, and the reason why this allegation was chosen, um, we to get the data from our, our computers. Well, partially to get the data from our computers. I mean, I kind of I strongly believe, and I have a uh, we have a hacker friend who agrees that <laughs> this is probably uh, the reason why Joshua Schultz, the Vault Seven leaker, was. Um, you know, caught for espionage and why they raided him for CP, which he denied for a very long time. And, and you know, there are coercive parts of surviving in prison that, um, like shortening your sentence, that can uh, get people to decide to recant that. Uh, but I have a hacker friend who says, you know, he worked for the NSA, he was a pro hacker. If he was an actual people, he would never have been caught. But crucially, they could never have made that. Uh, case for espionage if they hadn't seized his devices for CP. Now, they would have had no basis at the time to seize our devices to look at it for terrorism, I'm sure, is what they would like to look at us for. You know, yeah, this is what tried, they tried to put away at Toby Schoenberg. We tried to tread on eggshells when we do the broadcast in that we run close to the line of being kicked off of YouTube, but okay. we tried to keep within that line. You know? Yeah, I mean, what, what people yeah. need to understand is, first of all, you probably have never heard of us, and we're well aware of that. That's you'll also be aware of the notion of nipping a problem in the bud. But you should know, and you will right. see if you take the time to to look at our work that there we aren't like any other anarchist YouTubers. There is nobody else who says quite the same things. I'm sure they probably believe a lot of them, but they talk about whether revolution uh, would work, whether revolution is justified. We talk about doing a fucking revolution right now and yeah, how. We talk, we talk about how to take action. And, you know, right. you know the, we could have, like I was saying before we went live, if I thought that the uh, the, the comrades that, you know, I, I thought were just waiting for somebody to put their head above the parapet, if I thought that they kind of didn't want that, which it kind of seems like most of them don't, to be honest. If I thought that they didn't want that, I, we would have just been another one of those fucking anarchist YouTubers. We would have just had our life. My life only just got good. So it's just, to be honest, same with Ellis, finding each other. But we found each other because of our shared love for revolution and preparedness to take great risks. So we didn't let that hold us back. But crucially, because we had faith, we had a... Get down. <laughs> we had a bit more faith <laughs> that um, that people would see this, and I understand that the allegation is upsetting it, and for many triggering. It literally is for me, and that's why we believe we chose it. This is why we say we don't think they ever expect it to have to produce manufactured evidence to a court, right? And therefore, at this right. point, at this point, may not have even done that work. Right, and and this is why maybe the it's taking so long with the CPS because because we haven't fucking killed us well because I haven't killed Ellis yet which is Plan A because here's the point is I I've been a victim of a number of uh, forms of sexual trauma by a number of abusers and that all started because I was made so vulnerable by the attentions of a paedophile um, and it made me blood in the fucking water for every abuser that I got near you know. I spent most of my life uh, uh, in and out of, you know, <laughs> always treated for mental health problems since I was 12, in and out of psychiatric wards, making many suicide attempts. The idea that the state would believe it's an attainable aim to get me to kill myself, let alone if you read my, my poetry and the art, to make me kill Ellis, if I believed it was true. Yeah, to believe that that isn't that they believed it was an attainable aim is perfectly reasonable. It's a profile that can be gleaned from. I put out there for for fifteen years 
my advocacy expanded in like about four years or so ago to broader politics, but that's literally what I did. Um, it's the easiest thing in the world to read my poetry and go, well, if we made this allegation about her husband, she would get, and the truth is I'd probably do it if I just got suspicious. It wouldn't be right just to do it over being suspicious and even believing it, given that he is innocent, wouldn't be right. But that's the reality of how fucked up I am. You, it's easy to see that there is a brimming violence of having regretted not killing my abuser and just fucking waiting for the chance, frankly, in any of my writing about the subject that's been in the public domain for 15 years. To, mm. So we believe that they expected plan A, I kill him. That's like the tops. Plan B, we kill uh, ourselves, probably because I do, and then Ellis can't do this without me. And given my history of suicide, that's a very attainable aim too. And given what he's fucking faced with alone, <laughs> it's a very attainable aim too. I believe they almost fucking tried to do that already. One of the first things in the first blog mm. post where we started talking about this publicly was um, they tried to section me for starters, uh, just like I predicted. Uh, they triggered a uh, you know a big PTSD response because I'm having like fucking child abuse described to me as a victim of child abuse, um, and uh, like I, I've checked with. Like the charges were dropped on the day, I'll get to that. But I have also checked with the witnesses and they back back my words as well. I exclaimed that I wanted to kill myself and n nothing was mentioned of it at the time. No claim was made that I said anything else at the time. It was only after they tried to section me that, um, and they took me to mental health crisis center. The mental health workers, this is why I was considering actually uh, relenting and allowing myself to be put in hospital um, because then maybe people would actually fucking listen because I know that no mental health professional, just like those ones, none of those, those ones couldn't, none of them could listen to what I was saying, even back then, before I heard, before we knew about the warrant, and think she's definitely saying that because she's lost grip of reality due to mental health. Mm. I mean, for starters, I've had mental health problems my whole life, but um, they are depression, anxiety, and um, I've never been, uh, never lost grip of reality. That's just not the nature of my mental health problems. I've right. been in acute right. wards where I'm the only person not talking to somebody who isn't there it, just because it got that bad. But, but to be honest, it, it never got bad in that way, if you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. I don't believe any of them could do that. And they didn't. They just said, they turned to the police and said, listen, she's just very triggered and hacked off basically. And so, no, we can't, we're not going to, uh, uh, you know, approve this cop requested sectioning um, of this person. And, and bear in mind, I, I took, spent my time describing my belief that we were being targeted because we were anarchist revolutionaries. And they said this, when uh, they said that they weren't going to sign this off, the police went back into the hallway, made a call, presumably to a superior, came back in and arrested me. They didn't tell me what for at the time. And it's not surprising they didn't because those mental health professionals wouldn't, would have recognized it based on the response I would have had, based on the response I did have when I found out that this was a flagrant act of gaslighting um, and they would have called it out. So anyway, I get walked out in cuffs saying, oh yeah, no, anarchists aren't being targeted at all and this is surely all on the up and up and their jaws are on the floor. I get back to the police station and somebody tells me I was under arrest for threats to kill. I said, who? <laughs> and they said, that I threatened to kill Ellis, that I said I wanted to kill Ellis. And I mean, if I was going to be a pernickety, like, arsehole say, saying you want to kill somebody is not actually a threat, but the point is I never fucking said that. I said to them instantly, mm -hmm. that it's a fucking lie that you're making to establish the lie that I believe your lies about my husband. To strengthen your lies about my husband, go fuck yourself, no way. Um, he yeah. claimed there was CCTV, foolishly, very foolishly, oh because God. I just went, <laughs> okay then, show me. Um, but it never was produced, even in my interview, it took five minutes because I just went, show me that CCTV. It doesn't exist. Well, it will exist, but it will just show me saying something else. And, you know, there's literally right. nothing they could do to get out of that. So, uh, the charges were, were dropped. Um, also notable, I was uh, arrested for assaulting a police officer that day, which has been settled with a caution, which our lawyer couldn't believe. And the reason I believe they settled that with a caution rather than charging me like they normally would was because they don't want us 
talking about any of this in front of a court before they get the fit up before, before court. Yeah. They want nobody to fucking like, know about this for as long as together. possible, which is, you know, why I say to people, I need them, we need them sharing this. Yeah. I have to admit, right. you know, everybody in the circle to which I'm, we're trying to reach out, they're activists, right? Yeah. <laughs> they really understand that like little digital hearts literally mean nothing. I've said this in other cases, not just our own, um, you know, but the, you know, the truth is, it's about eyes and allies. The only way you increase that, we're literally putting out content every fucking day at uh, our SOS. Our social media is so fucked up. No one can find anything with search uh, results. Uh, I can't find our own threads. Uh, we were also, we were suspended. Uh, once I was released from custody, which was 12 hours, by the way, um, I was also denied medication which they were able to do only by lying to Ellis about what was required to give, get my medication to me and lying to say that they would give me uh, the meds in a little box that he handed over. Um, obviously, he said, I don't believe you, but you know, the fact is that he was right not to believe them. Um, cause, so they contrived to uh, deny me mental health medication for uh, a number of hours and then attempted two uh, for two doses. Uh, and then attempted to charge me with something I didn't do, presumably because they thought in a disoriented state I might go, oh, my God, maybe I did do it, which was highlighted by afterwards, after the interview, the uh, police officer, uh, the person who initially told me that about this lie, said, well, what did she say? And the police officer said she just strenuously denies the charges. He asked her in, like, three different ways, and she said exactly the same thing. And he, he said, what, she won't even concede. She maybe said it in the heat of the moment. And I said, Absolutely not. And it, you don't have the CCTV. That's where this fucking ends. But anyway, that's probably enough about that day. I mean, we've got a, a full, uh, you know, a thing. <laughs> There's a whole uh, thing. Yeah. It's yeah. all in one document, but there is the first blog post that's on this. And all of the relevant ones are just on the homepage of weareintolerant.online. Uh, it does go into it. Yeah, I, I wrote everything out yesterday. In the past um, few days. And it's worth well, past few days. It's bloody long. Uh, You'll it, see why it took really so long, long to put together there's once a, you see it. There's a lot of this because I mean, obviously, there's like because we we uh, didn't have that large an audience. A lot of people are saying, "Well, why you? Why target you?" Yeah. But actually, to be honest, not many people are even saying that. Well, this is something we're imagining they're thinking it's because, because people won't engage at all. It's because of our past. I, I mean, I, I was saying this morning, I have a theory that they were specifically targeting me because of previous actions I've done and the threat of future actions. It's yeah. very, also, it's um, super reasonable yeah, like, to that taking Ellis out would take me out of action because I would have nowhere to go. I would have to presumably go home, which uh, is not a happy place for me, to be honest. That They're not the worst family in the world, but it's, I had to get out. And um, also taking Ellis out, it's very reasonable for them to believe that would mean well, me in a psychiatric ward for the rest of my fucking yeah. life. So okay. uh, that's Before, why I think I think, I think the question about like happen. also it's a harder lie to sell about me because of all that public work, which is also the reason why we say they chose this allegation. They also chose this allegation because obviously it's uncomfortable for um, yeah. anybody who agrees yeah. with us because it's fundamentally opposed to our politics. That's the point of that's the point of all of this. Yeah. Now I had to resist a pretty fucking evil psyop right and i'm sorry but the weakness of so many people to not even engage and ask the questions to seek to understand if they're being played like that because this is a psyop on all of us by the way just like it's a smear on all of us it's been done before we don't know that he was definitely innocent but it kind of looks like he was a man in uh, arizona i believe he led a protest he was later charged with child pornography um and um then before he was even charged, he pled not not guilty for two years. Um, and the, when he did plead guilty, there were two things that could have factored into that as to why, which went to reducing the sentence, both of them. Anyway, um, the police officer is said, now I know he hasn't been charged, so I'm not really meant to comment, but this is really why we shouldn't listen to people who talk about defunding the police, because he probably knew he'd have an encounter what? like this one day. They will smear all of us. Now yeah. the blindness, yeah. the incredible <laughs> blindness of people not to see that, not to see that obviously if I'm saying I'm being manipulated because of my visceral, I mean, kill your abuser is something I've obviously had in my heart for a long time, given what I've already and told you. But it's one of the first things, of the first things that yeah. I learned from him was like the, of that as a political slogan. Yeah. 
I learned that from him for fuck's sake. Like there yeah. is just, there is literally no reason, none at all from anybody who actually knows him, let alone anybody on the fucking internet to not trust us. And I cannot fucking believe how much they still trust cops clearly. I mean, come on, the only people who claim that we're guilty, even like some uh, internet arsehole we got in an uh, argument with the other day. Now, I've kind of been worried that in some Twitter beef, somebody would cynically claim to believe that we're guilty, right? They can't even do that right. in that context because they know how ridiculous and unfounded and cynical it would look. So how in God's name are people who, you know, like I, I told you before we went live, that, yeah, I absolutely fucking expected like whatever form the state retaliation we expected would come, I expected them to stand up for us because I thought they kind of wanted somebody to stick their head above the parapet and try something that hadn't been done for ages. That is literally what has always happened with the struggle when it's pushed forward by by revolutionaries. And no, the comrades of the course don't get a fucking say in whether that that they are challenged like that. It, it does ask them to step up to the plate. It asks them to be serious about the things they've been saying, but that has never been the case. No revolutionary ever did a fucking referendum among their comrades to say, do you mind if I try to push the, the struggle forward and, and you will, you will of course, be required to show solidarity and stuff? You know, that, that's never happened. That isn't what happened now, and it's wild. I just don't think that they wanted to see another revolutionary, maybe, or maybe they... They think it's that we're saying something or they think something about themselves based on the fact that it's us that did it, not them. We had a lot, very little to lose. Why the fuck do you think anybody would do this? Like I said, we could have just been like any other anarchist YouTuber who we value the fucking contribution of. We've never said otherwise. I mean, Owen Jones, fucking tons of leftist, uh, you know, content creators, or leftish content creators, you know. Uh, in the UK, we're very, we're not hostile at, at all to them. So of course we don't think less of somebody for not having literally put their life and liberty on the line. And I don't know whether it is that petty kind of, oh, well, they, you know, probably think we're better than, they're, 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 they're better than them. Like, so I don't want to help. One of the reasons for leftist unity. I kind of now unity. if that's your response, but. One of, one of the reasons for leftist unity is that um, we don't, we we don't say everybody has their place in the revolution, even if all it is is <laughs> posting leftist memes on social media and spreading the word that way. Everybody plays their role in the revolution. The only, the only thing, the, the only choice you've got to make is which side you're going to be on. Do you know what I mean? But everybody, yeah. there's, there is no sitting on the fence. And that's the thing that's central to the politics that we're meant to all yeah. share. You know, even fucking libs are meant to get this that silence isn't neutral like insert endless fucking quotes about if you're neutral in in the you know uh, cases of oppression you've chosen the side of the oppressor i mean come on yep. <laughs> this yep. is how it works yep. the truth is in unawareness of our situation you're already on the state's side yeah because it helps them for people not to know that's not your fault but once you right. become aware and you don't talk about it, you don't recall it, and you don't even say this looks really sus as hell, and you don't have to associate yourself with like, sorry. sorry about this. I'll go let the dogs out. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, uh, I guess there was a couple of thoughts uh, that I uh, mm. I had while you were talking the first is like uh, the idea yeah, that uh, i think <laughs> i just i think that i think that sometimes the idea like when somebody might ask like uh well why target you i think that uh, that's a very online perspective right like uh if you're active in your day-to-day -day life if you've been active in the past that's not going to necessarily show up on your youtube feed or your twitter feed because Absolutely. you know and so yeah. then yeah the fact that you have Yes, less than ten thousand followers isn't like isn't relevant yeah, you have to, look <laughs> to the targeting of the police to you. See that nobody else has said this, at least in the fucking West. I wouldn't like to guess for the rest of the world. You know, I'm humble enough to do that, but and nobody. And, and we've been asking for months. Please just name us one other person that they would do this to if they were going to do it to a self-declared revolutionary. Yeah, I mean, nobody's given us an answer. And if you can't, you know, answer that, you cannot dismiss that this could be a fucking fit up because we're anarchist revolutionaries. And that means this matters to all of you, unless you were just never serious. Unless when you post about revolutionaries, are, it's LARPing rather there, than there ever wanting things. to see one again. And also one thing, how likely is it 
that we will ever see one again if it went like this for us the first time in decades somebody tried. Mm? Fuck's sake, guys. Sorry, sorry, I'm calmer now. But you've got to understand this is literally months we've been raising this alarm. You've got to understand my life was absolutely hellish and I only existed um, because I believed I could make change for other people. And then, mm. I, and then I met Ellis. I actually had some other reason but I still pursued that first part to the fullest I could because that's partly what brought us together. I still pursued that only because I had faith that people wanted to see somebody stick their head above the parapet like this, only because I thought we would have some solidarity. And my God, if this is how it goes, if we, even if we make it through, but no more people really give a fuck, you will never see, mm. never see another revolutionary try this again. Because to be honest, if they asked me personally, would it be worth it? What the fuck can I say? I tried to kill myself last week and considered actually putting myself potentially in the hands of an enemy in a psychiatric ward yesterday. What the fuck do you think mm -hmm. I could say? I don't lie. I would have to tell them the truth. And right now I would have to tell them, don't bother because they don't want change enough. I'm yeah. sorry, but you know, if people, okay. if they haven't got the sense that this would be the response, I mean, you can find on, on our website, on the about page, at the bottom of the page, I wrote that two fucking years ago, and it talks about the risk I was taking with this good life I'd finally found. Um, changing tack a bit and going back to something you were saying earlier about online content and it being a very online view, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, being an illegalist activist for most of my life, a lot of my activism can't be put online on social media. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're in prison um, afterwards. I mean, so. it, it's only, it, I mean, to be honest, I've, I've done so bloody much that a lot of it just fades into memory. You know what I mean? And it's only now that yeah. I, like a few days ago when I started writing this thing, this statement that we were going to put out, that I actually started remembering things that I'd done. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's, um, like I say, because it's illegalist activity, most of my online activity is spent uh, shitposting revolutionary memes and arguing right. with landlords online and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, just yeah. generally the, like the harassing fact, capitalists. The fact that I um, started <coughs> talking um, about you know things like black block and riots on my YouTube channel, and it was you know. I was also starting to work with and then partnered up with somebody who has been to riots, a number of riots many times, and engaged in action that nobody has for a long time because, you know, leftist anarchists haven't been that bold in this country for a long time. He's, you know, obviously older than me, and I'm kind of guessing that some people have, you know, just looked at that and thought, must be true then, which is the dumbest thing in the world. The other thing about whether it's an online view and the question of why we'd be targeted, I mean, I've written extensively. Uh, we both have, about why that would be. Now, the simplest thing in the world would be to just take up the request I have been putting out for such a long time, which is to just ask us. Because, and, and so what I was yeah, saying well, to you before I mean, is, is I'm basically it's, having to it's imagine obvious. what people's it's, questions and skepticism is based on. It's obvious. Because it's nobody's yeah, willing to put it forward yeah. and, and allow us to actually respond. We have to anticipate things and then go, oh, they probably do want some proof that I that we consciously believed we were taking a huge risk and would be targeted by the state at some point. They probably do not agree with that. Only yesterday. Now, somebody could have just said, well, how do I know that you expected state retaliation like you say? Right? Somebody could have just asked us. Right. And this is what I'm saying about engaging. What I'm saying is that you cannot say with a warrant that was obtained two days before the alleged crime and basis for that warrant, the only basis they've ever claimed, right? You cannot say that it is in any way right not to at least engage because, by God, if you can't dismiss the fact that this could be a fit-up, which I don't know how you fucking could, right, then you neither can you ignore that this could be a fucking a grave injustice that is a direct attack on your politics, yeah. on the desire for change, yeah. on what you apparently approve of and like when you post about old revolutionaries, but what, don't want to see now? And you're not even going to give it the time the consideration to just ask us, considering we have made it, I didn't realize people would want to anonymously, and it turns out we've only got two questions via that means anyway. But eventually I was like, fine, if you don't, if you want to be anonymous, do that. But if people aren't even doing that, right? Right. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I thought that people that I expected to stand, I thought they cared about the shit. 
I thought they cared about wrongful convictions, whoever they happened to. I certainly thought they would care that somebody who who took this risk in complete obscurity, knowing we would never achieve that much and that we would be in an uphill battle, we would be an unknown factor when the retaliation came. You know, if, if I wasn't so disabled and so fucked up, I would have maybe done things the right way. I could have got more done, right? I could never have competed with the shit journalists that I am better than every single one. I've broken stories at least three times, at least a year, sometimes two years before the rest of the mainstream media have. It's it's true. I've, I've got YouTube videos that were taken that were take, um, out a year, two years before, and I find these articles, and I'm like, two years ago, this one. You know, I was right. prepared to take a lot of risk and was already aiming squarely at the system, just not for revolution, right? And, and then she gave a platform to, to an illegal anarchist who has no fear of taking action. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's a dangerous mix as far as the state's concerned. Yeah. Yep. Because all it takes, I mean, I, I do, I radicalise fucking everyone I meet. You did it to our, you know, our I, I radicalised our landlord's right-hand man, the, the, uh, the site manager for the site we live at. I radicalised him and told him his landlord was taking him for over five grand a day in labour value. We haven't paid you know for I mean? rent it's, since. Yeah, we <laughs> You know, yeah, like, and this is after the conversation started with him kind of taking out beef that we have with the landlord on him, yeah, right? And then yeah. he went, sorry, I'm right. sorry, your landlord. Like, I didn't expect the conversation to, like, end on good terms at all, let alone him actually convince him that the man's being exploited. Ellis <laughs> is an incredible advocate. I wasn't, an, I wasn't a revolutionary when I met him. I wasn't an anarchist when I met him. Now, if anybody is confused by the age gap and my attraction to him, just listen to him for a fucking while. He's been let off the leash now in terms of authoring his own post. The boomer still won't fucking touch Twitter, but if you follow us on Mastodon, you see them. And it will not make sense for long. It will not not make sense for long. It will make total fucking sense why someone yeah. like me would just fucking love this man, right? And I am his fucking wife. I can attest that there is absolutely nothing about his sexual inclinations that indicate uh, an inclination like this uh, uh, offense implies just nothing, literally nothing, the complete opposite. Um, like, yeah, it's, and like I said, to be honest with the way I am, with how, how much I fucking hate these kind of people. If I found a single reason not to trust him in a, even with a single reason in a, a moment of what I know would be near madness, I could have killed him. The fact he's breathing is that he, I mean, I, I told it. Um, when, when the police rang me, when they charged Rosie. This is what I was getting to, to with, sorry. They, I got distracted they called me to here. They called me here. And I later found out it was a police constable that called me. He told me he was a chief inspector. And he also said that uh, uh, Rosa wanted to kill me. These were his first words were, hi, I'm chief inspector something or other. Um, your wife just said that she wants to kill you. She wants to give me a statement mm. the victim. as the victim. Mm. Yeah, that, that was what they said over the phone as soon as I picked it up. And when they yeah. told me that that's what they'd done. And I, my immediate reaction was, what the fuck have you done to my wife? What have you said yeah. to drive her to this point? Because the last time I saw her, I was outside your neck with my, my tongue down her throat. Yeah? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, there's no way. There's, the only way that Rosa would want to kill me was it would be if you fucking dickheads had persuaded her that these allegations were somehow true. Yeah? And, uh, I mean, the thing is, if, if you persuaded me that these allegations were somehow true about Rosa. Yeah, I'd fucking kill her too. And yeah, the fact is we and, yes, that, right. that, that threat to kill is credible, is what I said to him. That threat to kill is credible. The same as my threat to kill her is credible. Yeah? Now I'm I just don't that. believe that she actually did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. absolutely. And what I said to him was, right, I'm coming down there now and I'm coming to pick up my wife. Yeah? Now, the thing is, yeah. that when they told me that they'd call him and told him this, uh, my instant reaction, just like uh, instantly noticing and pointing out why they had arrested me for threats to kill and lied about my words in the first place, which was to somehow try to put it on record that it looked like I believed them for a moment. 
which they won't be able to do now um, because they just humiliate themselves with that CCTV claim, like I explained. Yeah. Um, but there's also the dates that we discovered the other day. Yeah, we'll get to yeah. that in a second. I just wanted to, as soon as they told me that they called him and told me this, I did the same thing. And I said, you're trying to fucking kill him by suicide because how do you think somebody would feel? Like they have extra safeguarding duties around suicide in these kind of investigations after like a number of, like this local poli um, police force, different powers, there's a story about like 20 families that were wrongly identified and investigated for this. And like, so okay. I don't know if these safeguards were put in. It was because of a computer virus, which is, you know, could be what this is, but I don't believe it is, judging from the completely fucked up police conduct at every yeah. stage of this as well. Now, right. It um, just seems so fabricated. It, it, I mean, but the other the one fact is that they, nobody come out on a carnival claim to believe behavior. it's true um, means that I don't understand how anybody can possibly ignore this and not say at least that the state has questions to answer here. I, I, do, I don't understand. I, I, I do find it absolutely staggering. And like I said, it's not what I fucking expected. And if it's what I knew that I'd get, I would never have risked the life that I'd finally enjoy yeah. living with Ellis. I would never have fucking done that. But the, um, the, the, about this, uh, first thing I want to say, was, before we talk about the dates, this uh, thing with the warrant. <laughs> Frustratingly, <clears throat> we could have noticed this ages ago. That warrant's been, you know, up on the wall for months in an envelope that says cop bullshit. But, you know, we, <laughs> we just hadn't looked at it. We, right. um, it's only, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, it, it, it didn't seem uh, relevant at the time, but Obviously, it was only when we were interviewed, and I was meant to be interviewed on the same day Ellis was and the day that they tried to section me, but obviously my reaction to just the discussion with the lawyer <clears throat> describing the evidence they claimed to have, um, you know, was triggering uh, enough to to fuck me up and I had a big outburst. And, um, I postponed it. Yeah, that, that was actually after I had already assaulted an officer, by the way. And I totally did do that. Like, didn't do She's the very again. proud of that, you know. Assaulting a police officer. Anyway. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> it, 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 it should be. Yeah. The power of the police is having somebody arresting somebody for assault of a police officer and having them react like a captured guerrilla fighter, on um, reeling off half an, of an unwritten manifesto and declaring their actions to be right and part of a much bigger fight. They had no fucking idea what to do with it. Every single one of them backed off to the wall and was silent. They have no idea how to react, and I think. And it's precisely because they have no idea somebody would dare do that now. And I guess, I guess that's why right. no one's taking this seriously. They don't think anyone would dare do that now. Uh, yeah, we actually did. The other one is they also know that my feelings are exactly the same as Rose's as far as the police, the charges. The, you know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, in my interview with them, when this person sat in front of me, this fucking cop, is sat there, describing images of fucking children being abused. And, I, I mean, to me, that's fucking disgusting. It's, the, it's their yeah. exploitation of those images to get to us is only the half of it. The fact that they're willing to exploit those kids that and the fact that, that have already been exploited, yeah, that is yeah. just fucking beyond evil do you know what i mean and that that to... drove me to breaking point and because i have ptsd with police that we declared already yeah it's driven by the police this is why i did a no comment interview i made a statement a prepared statement and then did a no, no <laughs> comment interview and <laughs> it's the other thing that probably unnerved them they, they probably could imagine interviewing anarchists where they both like are on ideological grounds do a no comment interview or that they both talk to a limited extent it probably did unnerve them a bit that one of them was prepared to talk to a limited extent. I am fucking done now uh, for reasons we'll get onto later. Um, uh, but uh, to have the other one say, no, I, I don't think I should say anything at all in case I have a reaction. <laughs> that probably scared the shit out right, of them. So right. when you did uh, actually say something other than no comment, they, they yeah. stopped. I mean, it. yeah, they did. I mean, it wasn't like I just went, you know, what the fuck are you doing? I, I went, what the fuck are you doing? You fucking animal, get the fuck out of here. I need a break now. I want to talk to a fucking solicitor. And the pair of them hurriedly left the room because I do have previous for violence against the police and I do have 
mm. uh, PTSD driven by police. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So the, the chances of me attacking them was pretty police, fucking high. You know, it's you know? right. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. It's been mentioned, but Ellis has been in prison uh, a number of times. You know, yeah. he, he's been uh, in, put in hospital by cops. You know, this PTSD around police. Uh, he, you know, he's. Uh, you know, was uh, sort of I've fought cops on a few like occasions. he had family at ba- you know? the Battle of Beanfield, right? You know, yeah. he, he's properly. I was in prison at the time. Existing hatred for cops. I was, I was, uh, I was on the convoy at the time. Yeah, and my bus and my girlfriend were at the Battle of the Beanfield at Savannah Forest. Yeah, and at the time. I had to watch it on television from in prison. Yeah, the police I watched, wading in and battering women, children, yeah. men. Uh, I watched my wife just... getting fucking battered. I watched my home getting destroyed on the news. Sat eating my lunch in prison. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. I fucking hate the police so much, and man. The, the, fuck the, the state, reasons we fuck have for hating the police, the police are all on record. That's they can't the deny only way them. To it's like I said to them. I didn't believe you before because I don't believe cops. But you've now lied about me, provably, because in the fact that you can't prove it and I've got witnesses that say I said something else, why in God's name right. would I believe you now? So when yeah. I stopped talking yeah. in the... Uh, the thing I was going to say about the warrant, which needs to come before the interview, is um, obviously people are... You know, if they doubt this, they're not really thinking about the fact we're obviously going to have to prove everything we're saying now in a court, but you know, I guess people might think, well, how do we how do we know that the the allegation that the police say that the uh, basis of the warrant happened on the nineteenth, right? Because otherwise, it could be before the seventeenth, and then we're lying. Like, I mean, for starters, if you think we're lying, just say so, and we'll you know actually engage and challenge uh, that. But also, we'll have to prove this in court. And also, also, we phoned our solicitor and and told them about this find that we only noticed today. You know, a few uh, Thursday. Which interesting is, uh, I, I've said a number of times, our social media has just died, both of them, uh, Mastodon too, which is really weird, since Thursday. And I got a message from somebody today, because I linked them into a thread, and they said, I haven't seen anything from you since Thursday. Yeah, it's like <laughs> our social media has been shut down yeah. and since bear we mind, posted a picture of, of the warrant and that was the, made out two days before the alleged crime took place. And right, it's right. Yeah. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, which is, could have been achieved by the simplest thing of a, a policeman reporting a tweet of ours the way any Twitter user could. But immediately upon my release from the, the 12 hours that day, um, uh, first time we checked Twitter, we were suspended for a week. Somebody sabotaged our as SOS. We had to put it out for a whole week to less than 300 followers in our, on our backup. Account. <laughs> now, um, you know, but anyway, um, we have spoken to our lawyer and verbally confirmed with him that he, that no date on which images were accessed, which is what they said the warrant was based on, uh, based on an automated flagging system that recognizes things about an image, and then they, they obtain a warrant based on it. Now, first of all, the, even if the warrant was got in a normal time frame, yeah, which is, uh, that would have meant a two-day turnaround, because they said to us, which we only learned once being interviewed, the, the first date the image was accessed were the 19th. They say that there was another one, but they didn't put that in, that date to me in my interview. But let's, let's say that they still are going to maintain that as the 21st. We were raided on the 23rd. Um, no, the 22nd. So that means yeah. that three days lapsed between apparently a flag uh, on an automated system and a physical raid and seizure of the device. I, right. I wanted to get a freedom of information request. I was like, this can't be normal. Like, they can't, nothing that happens this fast if it's not in the interest of the ruling class, you know, blah, blah, blah. And our lawyer was like, you don't need an FOI. Like, I've, you know, represented all kinds of cases, including these. It's usually months that people are accessing this stuff before their stuff is actually, like, from the point in which they first do being flagged and then actually being picked up. It's categorically not normal. The other thing he's confirmed to us now right. is that they have never put to the state and Bear in mind, they may change this because they've changed some other things, but he's confirmed with us in the last few days that they have never put a date prior to the 19th, certainly not prior to the 17th, on which images were accessed and therefore the basis of that warrant could have been obtained. Right. Now, the thing they did change, which was really interesting, and like, and, and, and here comes 
a kind of question over uh, lawyers, uh, maybe integrity, but damn sure uh, ability to help with the way legal aid's been gutted. Like, I mean, obviously, we were aware of the malign consequences of austerity on uh, legal aid. Like, obviously, it's part of the whole reason we oppose this system. But my God, when you want right. uh, to get rid of your lawyer, because even though he backed me that on what I said, that I didn't say I wanted to kill Ellis, he still came back with like system justification of I'm sure they thought it was reasonable. And I was like, dude, we can't have somebody who is going to like afford so um, much benevolence to, to the state I, in our case. Can I just point out that threats to kill the right. UK impose a maximum 10-year prison sentence? It can do, yeah. And the so other they're, thing they're talking about a ten year sentence. The other yeah. thing I will point out yeah. here is by trying to section me, they almost managed to remove my liberty in a way that could have been made permanent with no judicial process. All they need, once you're sectioned, is a doctor to say they need to stay sectioned and you will never yeah. get out. Yeah. They almost took my liberty for fucking forever and people don't seem to care. But anyway, uh, the the point is in, in the in the interview uh, with me. They s suddenly claimed some, not new evidence, but aspects of the evidence, like dates and times, that they'd never put to us. And we know that they never put to us, despite one aspect, um, which weirdly does show up in the lawyer's notes, but will explain why we just don't believe that that we were ever told this this thing. So uh, some people who have been following this for longer or, or are now and have seen there was a lovely week, a lovely bloody week, where we thought it was some particular local fash who did this. I mean, Ellis always thought this was a possibility. It was my favoured, or well, not favoured, I mean, right. obviously not favoured. And that's why we were so eager to believe this Nazi theory once we found some threats to, like, drop him in shit with police. And they were clear. They didn't care if it was something that, that he had done or hadn't done. So we were like, oh, maybe, it, you know, it was them. And that is obviously preferable. This is the only reason I kept talking to the police at all and spoke to them that stopped my interview because I was presenting this evidence. Now, the only reason we accepted that theory was because we mm -hmm. were told, I was told to by the lawyer, because you, you're told what the police are going to put to you uh, by the lawyer. And then you have the interview and the police put those things to you. They put to us the times for these uh, image accesses as 4am and 5am. So it was reasonable to think given that the, um, this, uh, these particular local fascists are, uh, are like properly local that the rest of their kind of fascist gang um, from Wales were all leafleting in the area around those days and so anybody who wasn't local but had the requisite skills would have been in the area to do it and if they were going to do that it would have been in the middle of the night right now not surprising that that they might fuck off halfway through and come back and finish it the night after next given that we would have been sleeping in the next bloody room so but anyway that's why we accepted this theory because we believed that the claim was these images were accessed at 4 and 5 a.m now in my interview <coughs> they suddenly said as i was giving them this uh de defense which we believe to be true and like it's really unfortunate that we put out incorrect information but we've made every effort to explain our reasoning and there's plenty of proof that this is not a change in defence and that we spoke previously before that week about believing it was the state, which is plenty of it. And, you know, people should have just bloody asked if they were doubting that. Um, but uh, the reason we, that it became apparent to me that it was actually the state, like I originally thought, was they suddenly said, because it seems this, you know, albeit accidentally um, effective, but an, a somewhat effective defence, uh, they sought to evade that by suddenly claiming, well, actually, you know, that those images were accessed at 9 a.m., so they couldn't have come in during the night. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? That's never been put to us. Now, the reason why I am just convinced that we were never told that is I remember the fucking conversation, but also um, every alarm in the house goes off to tell others to give me my medication. At 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. Um, I didn't remember to say this to you because... I don't remember taking my medication, which is why alarms go off to tell Ellis to do it for me. I have got but ADHD yeah, and stuff, but anyway. Every morning, nine o'clock, the whole house wakes up. Yeah, I, I would Because every alarm goes off. The dog's right. going fucking crazy. So, you know what I mean? There's, there's no there's way no Ellis way. could do anything in this small caravan without me knowing about it at nine o'clock. It's he would have ridiculous. just given me fucking pills. I would be awake drinking coffee that you've made me for fucking <laughs> Um yeah. That's impossible. Now, the other bit of evidence that they in well aspect of a bit of evidence previously claimed that they introduced at this time uh that was completely new to us and clearly 
uh, brought up to evade this accidentally effective defense um, was they said also it can't be people during the night because actually that list of search terms and they're talking here about you know like a list of the kind of uh, search terms that a pedophile would use when looking for this stuff um, but okay. he's talking about a word document with a list of words nothing that could flag their system that would be a basis for that warrant so even though they suddenly changed and said it could be them during that night because that was created in March, right? Even though they said that, that couldn't be the basis for this warrant uh, at all. So uh, so it's, that doesn't explain that away. The other thing is we were on, okay, a lot of people might think this weird. I know that people in our life thought it was a bit weird at the time, but we were basically on video call almost 24-7 at that point. It was 24-7. It, it, yeah, well, it, it was. I... We even slept with with the cameras on. I, I was right. Like, my life was not great, and I was very isolated in a home uh, where I was not very comfortable. And you know, working on activism was literally my life. The only reason I wanted to carry on with life. So when I found somebody prepared to work with me, somebody I also really liked, and I was the one that hit on him. By the way, um, you know. Uh, yeah, it, it was amazing to spend time with him. My point is, there's no way he could have done anything like that, and they they factually to this date have not claimed any images were accessed at that date at that time. Anyway, they just say that this right. word document like somehow exists or was created. It's at supposed that date. yeah. So, <laughs> so he couldn't have been doing any of that. They're not even claiming that he was looking at the images, but he. he it just wouldn't make no sense. Also, it was lockdown. I'm sure that we won't be alone in being couples who use video chat for, you know, particular purposes. Um, and, you know, this just, like I said, from the start to now, there is nothing about the, the sex we have or what he finds attractive that in any way indicates this, you know, just at all. I mean, to be honest, like, and I have to do a fucking caveat because it's the internet. I am not saying that everybody who is into the, uh, the, the S side of S and M is an abusive character, but it is undeniable that abusive characters operate in that uh, scene because if they're able to still get something out of uh, uh, that with consent being involved, it's a safe place to try and pursue those pleasures. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. You know, I met one um, when I tried it the other way around. Okay. A little bit of a, co a little bit of a filter me mechanism because, like I said, being abused by a lot of people, there is. I am very fucking careful. Like everything about me when I am uh, trying to seem attractive to somebody is designed to put off anybody who might be interested in abusing or oppressing me. That means even mm -hmm. trying to put off people who might want to do that and are not abusive, but just into that, you know, not kink shaving, but I want to be like, I wasn't prepared to take that chance. And it's a, it's a filter mechanism that I employed a long time ago because I clearly fucking had to, because like I said, I was blood in the water to these monsters for a long fucking time in my life. And so even though it's not even a fucking thing that's like a feature about our sex life now, the way, the manner in which I hit on him was a, a kind of femdom kind of way. Like, that nobody who's into kids, which is the the pinnacle of the exertion of like control and, and everything over somebody who doesn't, can't consent, nobody who is into that would be into being, uh, sub to an adult woman you know uh, but there's the least of the I fucking mean, reasons it's a bit not of a, to mention it's all his friends trust him his kids trust him his son has publicly put out statements what anybody is doing yeah, saying at this point is literally inexcusable i am sorry that i have that it's got to the point where i am morally condemning those people i am sorry but that is not my fucking fault is it See, I know it's a bit of a paradox, like, you know, uh, an anti-authoritarian being into authoritarian women. Oh, but, but we know it happens, it's, right? It's not yeah. used to anybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody in, in our politics that, that this is a thing. And, you know, but, but the <laughs> point is, the, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, yeah, no, I mean, it's, Unless they're wearing a police uniform. Then I'll just fucking attack them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Instant turn off. <laughs> he likes the, the librarians and the pencil skirts, not the, the fucking, like, Teens in Librarians, outfits, nurses. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and you mentioned yeah, that your son put out a statement. Uh, oh, Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, what was that? Uh, you mentioned that your son put out a statement on, on Twitter. So I thought uh, maybe we should discuss that a little bit. 
absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's easy to find if if you want to like talk about it while looking at it. Uh, so in in the um, <clears throat> on our profile, there's uh, the pinned tweet, which is uh, temporarily the one about this interview. But if you look at the QT, that's the uh, oh. Hang on. Uh, my my son's uh, trans, and uh, I, I've supported him in his trans lifestyle since he was twelve years old and decided to be a boy. You know, uh, I absolutely support him. Um, his online name now is Red, which I quite like. Um, but I, I also have another friend called Red, so it does get confusing. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, Jake he goes by, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah, he's a good lad. Yeah, so I just uh, want to find. I can only find like other people can't find our tweets uh, right now, but also. Um... Yeah, basically, it, it says that like you know, growing up, he had uh, like you know he had sleepovers with his with his friends. This is when he was when he was a girl. Yeah, uh, right. he had girl sleepover. Um, You've had kids uh, had, of, had, of friends I, or a kids of I've, enemies I've got loads with of friends you when they with couldn't kids. live with their families. Nothing untoward has kids. ever happened. No child yeah. has ever expressed that that they felt uncomfortable. Nobody who knows it, it with us shouting so loudly, we're innocent. If there was anybody who believed otherwise, don't you think you would have heard them? Don't you think they would have been in the comments saying, don't listen to these people. He's definitely like that. Don't listen to them. But nobody's done that. So what the yeah. hell are people justifying silence on? Yeah, this yeah, the, the thing that really gets, that uh, sticks out to me about your, your situation is that there is no victim coming forward. This is all claims yeah. by police. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and cops start, lie. Again, like, yeah. we can't yeah. trust what they say. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so, I mean, the question I keep asking myself is, are you ACAB or not? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. You know, it's not like <laughs> is it the only, it's not like our case is the only one in which I've said the words, unless, uh, like, I said real, but, you know, let's, uh, people got angry at that. Uh, unless, like, a non cop person backs something up, whatever a cop says, assume it's a fucking lie. Take, uh, and the, the thing i was yep. saying that about in that that instance was chris carver who was killed uh uh not long ago by met police initially they claimed that there was a pursuit they uh, admitted that well they claimed to admit that that was an accident and it was a rental car and they were pursuing who they thought still had the car turns out there was no fucking pursuit at all and they admitted as such later just like after yep. the bristol riots they admitted that no police officers were injured just like so many fucking times yeah. that it has happened and i have said we both said don't trust a fucking cop if like normal fucking people aren't saying a thing the other one now i, I seriously is, thought yeah, that right. our political community didn't need reminding let alone it would need reminding again and again let alone would still be silent i just it's I baffling think, to me i i mean one one that gets me is i i think um in a way i was gonna say i feel sorry for the local cops but i really fucking don't <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I'm quite it hated happy. every interaction, though. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. I think they don't know that this is a state fit up. They've not been told. They're just like, you know, they've just been told that something's been flagged on the computer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, they're investigating it like a normal case. And then all of a sudden, right. it turns all fucking political on them. And they don't know what the fuck to do. I mean, I'm, I'm even, even to the point where I think at Rosa's interview in Cardigan, I personally think that there was either Home Office or MI6 I said, in the building at the time. Well, like there was a bloke in my interview who wasn't present at any of the former exchanges. He was also more talkative than the woman who conducted the interview with uh, uh, Ellis. We'd never seen him before. He was also also... The man who had called me, the cop that had called me a number of times uh, and, and twice before claimed that I would have to be interviewed for all of this, like by the cop I assaulted. And I was like, that seems like a wild conflict of interest. <laughs> you know, we told our lawyer and they laughed and said, like, obviously, we're not going to let him do that. Now, an example right. of the failure of our lawyer is that the cop didn't try to do that on that day. But the, our lawyer didn't like bring up the fact that they'd like attempted to do that, which uh, you know, is a psychological tactic. It's it's fucked up and not normal. And and it's just like with even though he backed me on what I actually said, so proves that I was innocent of the threats to kill. He came back with system justification for 
for them having made that arrest. And, and in, in my eyes, I was like, well, surely in our case, we can't have somebody who's still going to afford so much benevolence to the state in a situation like this. Like, we really can't. We tried to replace him. Now, I knew that, that legal aid uh, was gutted, but my God, when you call the Law Society, which is in the UK, is the body that manages access to these things and other right. matters about uh, you know, private legal um, professionals as well, but but they manage access to legal aid. And we called them because we couldn't find an alternative. We live in like rural mid Wales. Um, and even uh, legal aid solicitors from Bristol couldn't come and represent us because uh, legal aid wouldn't cover the travel costs. Um, legal aid also only allows for work <coughs> usually done inside a police station or a court. Yeah, you can't have a, you can't go to your solicitor and have a meeting in the office. Yeah, we were lucky you to. Can't, you oh. can't even really have a phone call. Yeah, I asked him to really? get the recorded really? interview with Ellis to check whether his notes were right about 9 a.m. I told him that three, three weeks ago now. And he wouldn't, do, he know. hasn't done it. The response after a week to my, because I told him at the interview, I, I now can't send this evidence about the flash because I no longer believe it's them, right? We need to talk. I need right. to get clarity on these new things they've mentioned before I send you anything. He didn't hear anything for a week. And then he responded, just reiterating the police's demand for evidence, uh, not yeah. taking into account anything I'd said. But anyway, when we tried to replace him, because this is after this, now why did we stick with him? Because when we called the Law Society, they couldn't offer Ellis an alternative. But if you wanted it, they did have the Samaritan suicide hotline to at hand. Yeah. Oh, jeez. We haven't got another solicitor for you, but here's the suicide hotline. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's that uh, not hotline. very fucking helpful. Like, <laughs> no. Not really, no. Which is why we're stuck with this solicitor. The best I can Which do is, my sharing, is uh, radicalize him about- on, a, uh, like, on a fucking crash radicalizing <laughs> when, when I meet him every single right. time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and that's what I've been trying to do, he is was, crash radicalizing. He was surprised you know? when when he heard Ella say that, that he used to be on pit because he's disabled, but it was taken away. And and I remember at the time going, my friend, if you are surprised that disabled people are having their benefits taken away in the UK, I, I, I'm not surprised that you are skeptical of our claims. You know what I mean? Like, um, But the, the thing I was saying about the lawyer situation is not only is it, you know, all this suffering, only fucking worth it, uh, not because we're after validation, but because we understand that anything we sought to achieve by sticking, by trying to do this kind of agitation for revolution that hasn't been done in a long time, achieves nothing if nothing's done with that contribution. Martyrdom doesn't exist if nobody will stand up and say, yeah, they were a martyr for something I believe in. It, you become nothing. So it's not about validation. I want somebody to see what we did and say, well done. And I'm, you know, it's about actually any of this fucking having mattered at all. Yeah. Ha- ha- having mm. risked yeah, a mean, good life I have finally found <coughs> for anything. But, um, I've been, I've been uh, desperately trying to come to, the, to a resolution with the idea that a possible outcome of this is that I'm convicted of a sex crime that I didn't commit and more than likely murdered in, in prison in about two years' time. Yeah? And right. the thing is, I've not- been trying to come to terms with this. Yeah? Because it is a, a real possibility. Yeah? And I have no problem with giving up my life for the far right? But to give up my life in such a waste of a way with mm-hmm. nothing coming out of it other than the vilification of the left for a crime that I did not commit. Uh, that is the absolute antithesis yeah, the, of what I thought. That's, the, that's the total opposite of what I thought. I thought I was going to be killed by cops. I thought I was going to be taken down, you know what I mean, fighting. Yeah, because that's right. what I want to fucking do. Do you know what I mean? The biggest win that this, the this... state has got against anybody, anybody who talks about revolution anonymously or otherwise, the biggest fucking win they've achieved in a long time was handed to them because they've made people who tried doing this for the first time go, fuck, I actually regret that. Yeah. I... yeah. And like I said, do you think you'll ever see anyone else? You may not think we were very good at it, but you'll see, never see anybody do it better because nobody will try again after this. And the other thing, it's not just about whether it feels worth it to us or whether you give a fuck that we will have wasted our lives. 
if you feel like there's nothing you can do, you are <laughs> forgetting about how activism works. We need, clearly, a public interest lawyer, a lawyer that can do more than talk to us while we're in a police station and a fucking court. Our case is clearly too complex mm -hmm. for that, and we will be doomed if that's what we're stuck with, even no. with this fine. But no. it's well, time we get a barrier. Yeah. Even still, even still, let alone the fact you're raising awareness of this, which means sharing the posts, ideally with some kind of comment that says that you think people should take this seriously and it looks really sus, if not saying you believe us, right? Because it has more credibility if, if other people are saying you should look at this too, right? So uh, hopefully yeah. that's something yeah. good. Yeah. The reason why you share that is not only because otherwise all this was just fucking nothing, but because it's the only way uh, a solicitor that might agree to do this pro bono might see it. You know, th these have very material consequences for our chances of fucking surviving this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is there yeah, yeah, in, sure. uh, in the UK, uh, is there like a, a division of regions the way, like in the U S you have to have a license to practice law in individual States. Well, the, so where well, you not, are, not can really, not, not really. I mean, you know, no, you have the individual nations of Wales, England, Scotland, and all of that. I think yeah. What he's actually asking but, is better answered by, by saying uh, if we are relying on legal aid, we are restricted to mm -hmm. lawyers who can afford to travel to us, which means, well, we've tried to find another one. We've got one guy. That's the only one. And when we tried to get an alternative, they told us to call the suicide hotline. The only way we can get anyone from another um, district or, or another area, which they are allowed to do. But the only reason, the only way they will is if they are a private uh, legal practitioner that can afford to do this for free uh, right. as a charity right. public interest case. Um, uh, so, yeah, yes, they can, but only if, if they're pro bono and that crucially okay. relies on visibility. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be uh, uh, Yeah. So hopefully we can we can uh, reach somebody that can uh, put you in contact with. Uh, a private lawyer that can, or yeah, I mean, solicitor that can when, yeah, that put you we, in. We, we spoke to law firms about, uh, like, we, we got kind of mixed up calling some lawyers, and they were actually lawyers that take cases against the police after investigations because you can't sue the police while you're still being investigated. But when we spoke to them, uh, they said we had a really solid case against the police and that we would likely right. get damages. Now, if, if they can see that, like, I, I just, like I say, I, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, baffling. Yeah, what yeah. I can do right now is retweet the um, uh, the threads that uh, the thread and the tweet that uh, um, Red did because I'm I'm on the right page. So if you wanted to talk about uh, his uh, son's uh, statement, now we could do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So it's right here. <laughs> We're running Sorry, over an hour now, so. I don't have a ton of time left, but uh, I uh, yeah, I do no want to talk about it. Yeah, it's yeah. been retweeted, so it should be at the top of the uh, just under the yeah, pin. Yeah, uh, I mean, okay, I can I can read it if it's going to be a pain. Yeah, just read it. Hang on, I'll try this just in case. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my computer is is being really slow. I mean, we actually think somebody accessed our computers that. Uh, uh, yeah, that that's day, the other um, there was some, we'll have when to talk we came back time. from the police station, um, Rosa wanted to access uh, another account because her Twitter account had closed while she was at the police station. It, it was oh yeah, it had been, uh, shut it's down. Expensive. So um, she tried to she tried to access her other account and couldn't remember the password, which is on our main PC. And she looked it up on the main PC and it asked her uh, to change to the user account which means another account had accessed it which would have been a guest account and there are no guests and there are no other accounts on my computer so while we were away someone accessed our yeah. password list ellis was at home when they called him and told him that guest. i wanted to kill him like but he was only at home for like three hours there was a huge period of time of at least five hours both sides when we were both out but uh, i have just tweeted at you so you should be able to find it far easier because it's not turning up on the timeline the tweet with the relevant stuff about a uh, red statement okay I'm just bringing it up. So there's a screenshot and then it also quote tweets a thread um which you'll have to scroll back uh, yep. top of. yeah here we go okay so that's got the quote tweet i'm going to bring this up on the screen 
Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I am so proud of my boy Jake, man. Wow, what a dude. The fact that he calls me his stepmom is like the most amazing thing in the world. Like, like I said, that's awesome. I have the kind of the I, the fact that I have a family at all, like which is how I refer to Ellis and the dogs, is like I fucking never like genuinely that was never going to happen for me uh, in anybody's estimations. The fact that I I have somebody a stepson uh, is. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, it, yeah. Anyway, anyway. So it's here. Yeah, the tweet. Yeah. So, so we're we're looking at the uh, Red's uh, Twitter thread, and he's he says, "Yes, I'm talking about this again. It needs to be fucking talked about. What's happening with my dad and my stepmom is getting ignored. Although I am aware that nobody followed me for seriousness, that's what you're fucking getting because this is important." And my father, the man who raised me to be the person I am, and the one person I probably trust more than anyone else in my life, is being accused of the police by of being a pedophile. Having grown up with him and brought my friends around all my life, you'd think I'd fucking notice if he was, and I can tell you with 100% certainty that this is a fucking lie. It's a lie so that they have grounds to arrest him and possibly my stepmom, as well as for being non anonymous revolutionaries online. It's far too early for me to accurately put all the information that's public into this thread, but please read this and read what Rosa and my dad are saying. So essentially, uh, Red is saying that, like, yeah, they grew up their whole life I, around you yeah. and, <laughs> and, and, and brought friends like, around I, and like. Yeah. 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 And I was just a dad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was just a fucking dad. Like, yeah. The thing is, is I, you know, you can tell I properly love Red. And I spoke to him in direct private messages and I said, listen, you know, given that there's nobody, uh, you know, claiming that he's done anything to him, that it's the police saying he's accessed images, which they've detected by police labs doing an investigation of computers, which were cleared when they were hit. Given that there's, it's just them saying it, the only person who could make me change my mind and distrust him is you right now if you were to tell me <coughs> that you had any suspicion like if you if you feel right. like there's any reason i shouldn't trust him that this might be true like and you told me i would be on your fucking side and he, he just said i am 100 just like he said that it's 100 a lie he said it was 100 he 100 percent trusted his dad yeah 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 no, I I mean, mean, uh, and he's but, terrified oh. now that he's gonna lose him he's yeah. terrified he's gonna lose his dad yeah. People should care just for the fact that a kid is saying my parents are being fit up for political reasons and I'm scared that he's going to go to prison and get killed. People should care just for that reason alone. Strong boy, darling. I know, but he's all abused. I know, I know, I know. I know, he's had a hard life. so are we, but... for fuck's sake. I know, I know. Anyway, I know. yeah, he's amazing. It's and there's other boy. kids trust him too. I've also spoken to them. But, you know, Considering they also agree that this is a state fit up for this politics, not all of them are thrilled that we do this. <laughs> like you know, yeah. And yeah, my stepdaughter really doesn't like the idea that I do this. Doesn't she doesn't like. I mean, honestly, but at the same time, Rose has spoken with her, and like she's she said, no, there's no fucking way. Like, you know, yeah, I mean, this is not my dad. Like, yeah, I can understand her you know, not wanting to do like a public that's for, statement. That's, that's from my daughter that fucking hates me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like it, she really is. Like super mad at him at the moment. They haven't spoken since uh, yeah, yeah a little while. But half, like, you know, if yeah. she wasn't gonna say something then, like <coughs> you know, then there's just nothing right, right. to say, you know. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's a, it's a lie. And, and the fact that that literally nobody, not a single person who isn't a fucking cop, claims to believe it, it should be yeah. uh, enough. That the fact that the warrant was got two days before the alleged basis for the warrant is like. You know, that's yeah. a recent discovery, but honestly, there's been a nudge in the public domain for take, absolutely right. weeks. And I, well, yeah, there's been an increase in attention after that find, but Jesus Christ, I mean, anybody who's anti cop should be fucking thrilled to find, to, to find some evidence of police lying like that. How are they not seized right. upon it? Yeah. You know, and, and I get that this is hard for those people that we're relying on support from who are sexual, uh, victim of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. as i've said literally countless times i am one that's why they did this 
I shouldn't have to do much to convince you to condemn a state leveraging sexual trauma like you have, like I have, to seek to weaponize me, to kill my husband and myself because they hate my politics. You may hate my politics too, but you must see how evil that is. Now, if you can accept what I've said so far and at, at least call it out, if not say you say or, or look into it further to decide whether you actually believe us, which is understandable. It is triggering. That's literally, like I said, the point of it. Um, but if you can at least just share things, you don't have to fully read the stuff if you already see, as anybody should, that this is weird and the state's got bloody questions to answer and that if indeed our theory is right, that it is very evil and it is a weaponization of of the kind of pain literally you live with. It's a weaponization of trauma. I, imag imagine it happening to you. I realise it's hard to engage with, but at the same time you have more reason than many, more reason than many to call this out. Yeah. And I just Im implore you to, to listen to us and do that, please. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's a good place to stop. Thanks so much yeah. for uh, letting me so uh, uh, giving yeah. us this uh, chance to be heard out. And we're going to watch it on playback and see what was said in the chat. And uh, and you know, because I'm sure that we didn't get around to responding to to things that were put in there. And uh, and you know, that that will really help us. Like I was saying earlier, we've been having to try to guess what people's like remaining like uh uninvolved is based on like what what why they're skeptical and just right, go right. or maybe it's this okay, i'll put this out um because pr maybe that's yeah. something it would just like not only are we willing to answer any question it will really help us yeah. to see because we already know everything like we're living it because, yeah. and so therefore we know everything we don't know necessarily and because we put so much out there there's so much information we don't know what we've missed asking yeah, us right. questions is literally a way of helping and hopefully, you know, if yeah. if somehow you still need uh, to know more, like uh, just fine, fine, just ask us. But then, then you can decide and and ensure that you're not on the wrong side of of history here. Like I, because of my trauma, because of literally the reasons why it was done to Julian Assange and the reasons why they're doing it to me, I didn't defend him strongly enough against what was revealed to be yeah. unsubstantiated allegations Sorry, yeah. of sexual abuse. I didn't say. I have I mean, sincere I, yeah. regret about that, and honestly, when it when you when people That's realize that we are him. innocent, it's going to break yeah, their yeah, fucking hearts. Yeah, it was uh, Julian Assange of WikiLeaks that inspired me to initially ring the International Criminal Court about uh, illegal rendition through Scotland, which is mm. now proven to have happened. By the way, yeah, it was about time. two years after I called the court and spoke to the chief prosecutor. It was about two years after that. That came out in the media at that airport. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. thing. I mean, I, I did a thread. That's the other thing uh, with asking questions. And yes, my hands are fucked. You, but we've already got a thread on it, like with the answer, probably. And we're happy to expand on it. But like, if you just say, you know, why would you be targeted? I've literally got a thread on that. <laughs> like, I can give you that. And then any further questions you have, I'll answer those. If you. Yeah. Say that you, there. Uh, if you notice any gaps, <coughs> like, thank yeah. you for pointing them out. Answer them, and in future, you know, it, it really will help. Sure. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, for for people who listen to this after the after the fact, check out uh, their website. We are intolerant online, um, and uh, yeah, try and keep up with this story. I I do think it's important. I you can't trust cops, <laughs> like the and the state will attack anarchists wherever they can. So, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, dude. All right, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it and it helps me spend more time on this and my other project. If you want to contribute to all of that, then you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating and a review on the podcast app of your choice would be great. If you want to find out more from me, then make sure to check out the show notes uh, for links to all of my stuff and check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. Um, there you can check out my other show, From Many People's Strength, uh, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics, the videos I do with my uh, friend Damien Marie at Hope, 
and all my old content from the Brainstorm podcast. Uh, you can also find links to my Discord, Reddit, and Twitch. You can contact me through my website or by emailing mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. My Twitter is at skepticallefty, and my Facebook page is the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. Thanks so much for listening and or watching. So, and make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website. Go join a local org or uh, print off some posters and pamphlets and spread some propaganda.